for us in Australia, we think that Nightingale Village is a prototype of the future. My name's Jeremy McLeod. I'm the co-founder of Breathe Architecture, co-founder of Nightingale Housing. I guess you could say I'm the co-founder of the village and I'm one of the collaborating architects with Architecture Architecture on Urban Coop. Today I'm sitting at Urban Coop, which is on Wurundjeri Woiwurrung country. We're about six kilometres north of the city here in Brunswick, between Brunswick train station and Anstey train station. Urban Coop is at the southern edge of Nightingale Village. It's not in Duckett Street, where the other five buildings are. It's out on Hope Street and it has all of the services connections. So it has the, the electrical connection, the main water connection. Uh, it takes all of that load off Duckett Street so that that can be a beautiful place for people into the future. In my view, density done well is medium density. So that's four to eight stories located in the right places. And now we have Urban Coop, 29 apartments, with 29 households, 29 families. They raise their own money, their own capital, and partner with Nightingale to deliver on, you know, one of Australia's first intentional community buildings at eight storeys. Nick James, Design Director at Architecture Architecture, and we're one of the collaborators with Breathe Architecture on the Urban Coop building. The architectural intent behind Urban Coop is it really differentiates itself from the other buildings within the village as it is a deliberative co-housing community. The client group was actually pre-formed and it was a much more involved uh, collaboration with the residents. I'm Janice. And I'm Brenda and we're residents at Nightingale Urban Coop in Brunswick. We discovered co-housing Australia um, at the Sustainable Living Festival more than 11 years ago and promptly became members of Urban Coop. So it's taken us all that time, along with others, to find land, design the building and then move in. So it's been a long journey, but we're so glad that we've done it. Nightingale's built on the idea of three fundamental pillars. Social sustainability, ecological sustainability and financial sustainability. Let's talk about ecological sustainability first. We're in the middle of a climate crisis, so we have to drive uh, sustainability in every building that we do, and we have to drive for carbon neutrality. Fundamentally, what that means is that everything we do has to be 100% electric. Our buildings have to be best in class in terms of energy efficiency, and then we share as much infrastructure as possible. This idea of sharing infrastructure extends to beautiful rooftop laundries where the residents get to share the laundry infrastructure. As a result of moving here, we've been able to reduce our electricity consumption and we are not needing to spend very much on heating or cooling. So from a sustainability point of view, that's been a big bonus. Another great aspect of the building is that we meet up in various rooms. We often have people in for morning tea, afternoon tea, or we meet down in the kitchen dining room. The communal kitchen and dining space is really the heart of the co-housing community. It's where the resident group can come together for informal dinners, lunches, um, and larger gatherings. We've got lots of different shared spaces in our building. Our fourth floor is a particular delight. So there's a big setback from the street, so we've got a big outdoor area. We've got a large multi-purpose room, and we've got provision for two guest rooms and a bathroom. So there's just so many points where we connect with others, and that, that's been a pleasant thing to come out of this. The key design moves when working in a small space are, are all about first principles. So natural light, cross ventilation, built in joinery where possible and really using the edges of the space. The Fisher and Paykel appliances were key to this idea as they um, can be built into the cabinetry sitting flush against the adjacent cupboards. The look of the Fisher and Paykel appliances also tied into the aesthetic of the building with the black finishes and the stainless steel materials. In terms of the appliances themselves, we've included a French door fridge, oven, induction cooktop and the undermount range hood, and also an integrated double dish drawer. The big surprise for me was how much I love the induction cooktop. 
and the oven. They're both very efficient. Another great surprise for us has been the dish drawer. It's so quiet, we can even be talking on the phone or listening to the TV while it's running. So that's, that's been a nice bonus. Nightingale's been very lucky to have a long-standing partnership with Fisher and Parkell. When we decided to go on an all-electric pathway to build fossil fuel-free buildings, we needed a partner that cared about sustainability and we needed a partner that could deliver high-efficiency appliances for our buildings that would last for a long time. The materials within the building, generally concrete, steel, um, it's a relatively pared back material palette as the interior spaces were of a greater importance than the actual look of the building. What am I most proud of? The fact that it exists, that uh, a kind of bold, crazy dream was actually delivered upon for 29 different households, with 29 different apartment types, but for one beautiful community.